Hello, everybody. It's Stefan. Morning, Steph. Early morning, Steph, with that early morning breath. No, I'm just kidding. I brushed the teeth. No, I didn't. Why am I lying to you? I don't know. Look at me. I look awful. I've got the hair half in a ponytail. The other is just cascading down, but not in an elegant way. It's just like circus clowns falling from the trapeze. It's horrible. And uh, this is just, this is the splash of reality that you guys get celebrities we don't always look amazing unless you're just listening and not watching on youtube i look fabulous but here i am talking about myself i don't want to talk about me actually i do but not right now right now i want to talk about lou moon the the blessed the sacred of moons lou moon he's an amazing comedian he is right here in phoenix and well, I don't know his exact location right now, but I think he's in the general area and he's been performing for a good old while. We talk about that. We talk about him performing stand up on mushrooms. We talk about his podcast, the best animal reviews podcast with he and fellow comedian Zach Lyman, just two real sapphires of people. I would probably pull an Indiana Jones and go on an expedition and then take them and put them in a museum because they're just so good. I would have to switch them out for another comedian, you know, just so the weight is there so that the booby trap doesn't get pulled, but I would do it because that's just how precious they are to me. And you know what else is precious to me? You guys, my audience, my listeners, you guys are like the uh, rubies. You guys are better than sapphires. Remember all that good stuff I said about Zach and Lou? done they're they're trash garbage compared to you sweet treasures thank you so much for listening thank you so much for watching and if you haven't yet subscribe review and come see me august 1st sunday bridge improv theater it's free it's free you don't have to pay anything and you can just come i'm going to be doing 10 minutes squeaky clean so clean and i'm going to be talking like miss piggy i'm not going to talk like that so that's another reason you should come and check me out. And then I'm also going to be hosting at JP's Comedy Club the 26th through the 28th. And there's lots of good stuff coming up. So follow me on Instagram at a comedy advice podcast. You can get all your Steph goodies. And you don't have to spell that morning breath. So amazing. Two bonuses. All right. Well, now I'm just going to let you go into the intro. So here we go. Well, cheers. Welcome to my humble abode. Oh yeah. my oh. god. Oh man. <laughs> I feel like we just get, became best friends. Yeah. One clink. Like honestly, like that's what I've been thinking about is as soon as I messaged you like can I come on the podcast? Because I messaged you, I came groveling to you. <laughs> I <laughs> You've like, been the only one, Lou. The yeah. only one. <laughs> like um no, it it immediately we, we like started doing bits. Yes. And that was that was very like a like a precious moment to me. Cuz I don't know if you've noticed but like th this is my one of my big beefs with comedy. I have many beefs. I hate doing comedy. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm locked into a contract and can't stop. Oh god. Um, <laughs> no, but it's like comedy doesn't feel very silly anymore. Yeah. Like do you think that's right because Yeah. I don't know. Like I remember, like, when I first started doing comedy, like, all I wanted to do was talk about it. Yeah. And then I started meeting, like, more locals, and they did not want to talk about comedy that much. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and maybe it was just because, like, I was new and and all that, but, like, I didn't really feel like that camaraderie right away. I and see. ever since then... It's it's been a it's been downhill. It's been oh. <laughs> just no, just comedy doesn't feel very silly anymore. And I like silly. That's what I like want to do on stage. I want to be silly. I agree. Yeah, I agree one hundred percent. I feel like the more silly, the better. If I was a chocolate chip cookie, and the chocolate chips were comedy, yeah. I would just eat the bag of chocolate chips. And yeah, I'd be like who cares about the cookie dough being the <laughs> yeah. The menial, banal, boring batter. I just <laughs> yeah. want the chocolate chips. And exactly. You know what? If I get comedy diabetes, that's 
fine. Yeah, because it's, cause it's better than regular diabetes. Exactly. Yeah, regular. Yeah. Yeah, regular <laughs> I'm gonna the chop worst. off your comedy foot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take type three, please. Yeah. <laughs> I have terminal comedy <laughs> diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh uh, well yes and i i agree with you though and i feel like it's just and especially hitting on your point just beating the shit out of it i feel like there are people that they might just be funny on stage and then they come off and yeah. you're like are you sure you're a comedian yeah is that is that real because they just don't like to talk comedy no and they don't um enjoy life at all really no it, it doesn't seem like that where it's just like i want to put i want to like inject joy back into comedy because it's so like we had a nice little filler those little puffy lips like yeah little, exactly. little duck lips <laughs> yeah <So> like, <laughs> <laughs> why the chicken cross the road right. okay yeah like that's, that's... i want to bring that joke back <laughs> and i want to ask the crowd non-rhetorical questions <laughs> And for them to all go, what? Why? <laughs> I uh, I can't wait for that renaissance when yeah. we're able to remodernize the chicken crossing the road. The yeah. knock knocks. Exactly. I'm tired of writing jokes. I, <laughs> I want to get my jokes from like a homeless person on the street. <laughs> <laughs> what about those joke books? Remember, there were like 101 jokes. Yeah. Like, that's what I call my writing notebook. I call them like my joke books. Oh, but like I it's, love it. Yeah, but it's also just like sad journal entries. <laughs> and, like, I was gonna say you should publish that, but then somebody buys it. They're like, "Oh, all right, 101 jokes." Yeah, dear diary, today was rough. <laughs> it's, it's it's it it really is like on one page. It's like a joke I'm writing about gorillas, and then the next page is just like, "What the fuck am I doing?" <laughs> like. <laughs> Like oh, the silverback travesty, yeah. as, we, as we call it. <laughs> uh, I, can't, I can't come up with anything better than silverback travesty. <laughs> it sounds like an amazing band name. If yeah, band I was about to not... say, that's like a jam band, and they play 40-minute songs while I'm on Mushrooms. <laughs> that's... We're the silverback travesty. We're going to play Primate Punch now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. Yeah, we're gonna play our hit song Go Go Gorilla. And I'm just and and I'm in the corner like with my pupils like out like down to my nostrils. That's that's my ideal night. Oh my god, that's uh, exactly. Yeah. And then go up and do stand up. Exactly. Open for the, the silverback travesty. I, I have one time <laughs> Okay, uh, please done comedy on mushrooms and I don't recommend it. <laughs> Oh, how was the experience? <laughs> well, you know, it wasn't uh, on purpose. Um, it was, I was over at my friend's house and she was like, hey, I have some mushrooms. Do you want to take them and watch Shrek? And I was like, there's nothing more I want to do in this life than eat mushrooms and watch Shrek. I donkey. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Get oh. out. You get out of my swamp. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now, you're an all-star. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that if, like, Shrek was a 90s sitcom. It's like, hey, get out of my swamp. Oh, <laughs> Cut my it out. Get yeah. out of my swamp. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. God, I wish I knew more Shrek quotes. I've watched that movie yeah. dozens of times. Oh, That yeah. was, like, one of the first DVDs that we had for our family DVD player. Oh, same. Right here. It How was, old are you? Uh, 32, 33 this month. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. The age of the Lord. Oh, uh, that's, <laughs> oh yeah. shit. Okay, yeah. so I am right up on that expiration <laughs> date. How is that for your God complex? Oh, God. I mean, it is uh, piercing, <laughs> I should say. <laughs> right uh, in the hands. No, that's like... Um, well, because like you're not so you're not much older than I am. How old? You are 29. I am 29. Nailed it. You okay. nailed it. You look, I, you look actually... Younger. I don't know why I didn't go younger. Because I usually always go younger. Anyway, whatever. You're 29. That's... I'm amazing. <laughs> Again, God complex. Well, um, I, I, I was talking to someone who I worked with because I work in a fast food place. So I work with like children. And uh, I, I, like, <laughs> I just imagined you working with actual children. <laughs> You're like, can you get the fucking sub ready, Marvin? Yeah. I'm yeah. trying. Yeah, okay. I, I work in a restaurant that's like all food made out of Play-Doh. That's... <laughs> It's macaroni art. They're yeah, just... exactly. <laughs> like, and uh, one of them wanted to guess how old I was, and they guessed thirty-eight. 
Oh, bro, whoa. Yeah, and I, I wanted to jump into traffic. <laughs> Dude, I kind of feel your pain, although I did it to myself. I ended up when I usually, when I was 18 or so, I would say when people were like, how old are you? I'd be like, I'm 28. And they'd be like, no way. <laughs> now, at 33, I'm like, I'm 43. And they're like, yeah, I can see that. Oh, no. I'm like, <laughs> oh, shit. So now I have to rewind it back to like 23. And then they're like, oh, 25. I'm like, okay, like, that's very I, I would say this. I would say that like, despite, like, because like, you are older than I am, I definitely look worse than you. I <laughs> no, I would disagree. You dress up way nicer. I've I, got a T-shirt that's pretending to be formal with buttons on it. <laughs> I do. You've like got that. like an actual formal safari. I do. Uh, yes, I'm. I'm wearing. But here's the thing: is that you like, look like you just beat Jumanji. That's <laughs> that's incredible. That's no. I I I feel like I have been trapped in Jumanji, <laughs> Robin Williams style. I can't get out. Yeah, the inside is Jumanji, <laughs> and I have to deal with this. I have to run away from ostriches on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Give me... You know what? We're actually going to take a quick break because it is hot as the dickens in here. And it I'm is hot. I'm going to turn on the air conditioner because I usually do that and I forgot to do that. So it's going to be stamped up. Okay. Oh, sorry. While I have you here alone, Staff said that if I don't have a good episode, he's going to kill me. Oh. No! Or, uh, we do have a big Jumanji fan base, so I hope you didn't start to besmirch the Jumanji franchise name. <laughs> That's, look, the first one was great. I forgot there were like two more Jumanji movies that came out recently. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Classics with yeah. uh, Kevin Hart and The Rock. Yeah. And uh, the whole other cast that yeah. nobody cares I believe about. Jack Black and Karen Gillan. I don't oh, know why I know this. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Black stole the... I didn't see the second one because I yeah. didn't care that much, but the first one was okay, and Jack Black yeah. did a phenomenal job. I know the cast of a movie I haven't seen, and I could know math, and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you did great, but we were, <laughs> we were... What were we talking about? Shrek? We were talking oh, yeah, about mushrooms. Was, yes. Um, and then... So I had done mushrooms, and we were about a quarter of the way through Shrek, and they started you know, kicking in, and I got a text from the owner of a venue... And was in the text said, where are you? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. And I was like, attention listeners across the galaxy, all the way from Australia to Houston. Do we have a pube problem? If so, our friends at Manscaped have cleared you for takeoff with their fourth generation and brand new lawnmower 4.0. Kick your pubes to the next planet with the performance package 4.0. The orbits in your pants will feel like you're in zero gravity when you use the best tools for the job from the leaders in male grooming. Join the 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get your rocket ready for takeoff by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code ACAP. You know, I've tried to trim my clackers with regular trimmers, scissors, heck, even just yanking them out. But you know what? Each time there's blood or tears or both. So guys, don't be a silly goose. Be a smart duck. Get the new Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. This spaceship is here to guide you on a journey to trim your body, balls, butt, and even Uranus. I'll tell you what, I got one and I used it and I went on several trips around the galaxy. Abort hairy balls and buzz light ear that woody with Manscaped. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code ACAP at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code ACAP at manscaped.com. For a clean trinity and beyond, your space balls will thank you. I had just remembered I have a show tonight. And I was like, I have to go. Oh, and th- Lord. And my, and my friends who I had taken the mushrooms with were like, you shouldn't go. Like you shouldn't drive on psychedelics, and then I Fair. and then I told them this wouldn't be the first time. Oh, <laughs> and so <laughs> Shroomy Lou, I feel yeah. like you should have a moniker. That's just... it, it, Shroomy Lou. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, my favorite Thai dish as well. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Yum Lou. Uh, <laughs> So you did it. So you ended up making the trek. I, I did. And um, because I, I like many other uh, young white men, had a uh, Hunter S. Thompson phase. 
and a, a what phase? A Hunter S. Thompson. Oh, I don't know who that is. Oh, uh, writer. I'm so sorry. Uh, he's he's a writer. He wrote like Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, and oh, um, okay, yeah. okay. Like, so stuff that cultured people should know about, and I uncultured swine. Got yeah, it. Okay. Yeah, it's it's. I don't. I wouldn't call that cultured because all of his stuff is just like I did drugs and then I did this other thing, <laughs> and, I, and I'm like reading this at like 22, just being like, this is the best thing I've ever read. I love how you just broke down the formula of like I did drugs. And one more thing. <laughs> yeah. And I'm and that's art. That's yeah, art. Exactly. One hundred percent. Love it. And so I go and I do comedy and I'm just like before the set, I'm like, there's like, don't mention it. Just get through your set. And the fir- and like I go I go up on stage and I grab the mic and I say, What's up everyone? And then like it's like I was It's like I was being controlled by like a puppeteer. I was like, what's up, everybody? I'm on mushrooms. And everyone was like, (laughs) yes! Like, (laughs) oh my God. Amazing. So glorious did you how was the rest of the set? It was fine. How long how long was the set? Was it five? I think like ten. (laughs) Yeah. How did it feel? Did it feel like ten? I mean, it felt like forever. (laughs) But it it, I know I know it was ten because I looked at the clock on my phone beforehand, and then I looked at the clock on my phone afterwards, and was like, "That sure was ten minutes." That adds up. I, I can't argue with this. That's, you know? Yes, you can't. You cannot. You exactly. Cannot. Well, good. I'm glad that that was a success. By the way, speaking of success, we didn't have a successful intro, but I'm going to jump right into it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a comedy advice podcast. My name is Stefan Stani. Your host. Joining me today, very special guest. Everybody, please welcome Lou. Moon. Hello, everybody. Hello, Stefan. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. You brought me into your lovely home. You made me a drink I've never had before. It's uh, very red. Oh, yes. Yeah. Just like my heart and my love for your presence. I feel like this is just an honor to have you in here. It's It truly is like an honor to be had here to have, you know, like a, a genuine, authentic moment. Oh, well, this <laughs> yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. Let it just continue to swell up. And, and you know what? I'll just keep blowing into it. That's an honor to have had you had me have had. Yeah. So, and, and you know what? I have to admit. So we were talking about this mm. and I'm keeping a lot of that intro before I should have. I was just so engrossed in your stories and our chemistry is just so fire it's very good it's very fun yes i feel like oh my god i just forgot the name of the writer of breaking bad but he should take notes because we just yeah. made some good chemistry take notes vince gilligan i yes, know yes vince gilligan <laughs> i know plenty of celebrities that's why we complete each other yeah. and i wanted to say i feel like so the admittance i have had you on my list for probably two years actually is that, that's a long time many years yes now can i times. ask you a serious question about that you may um have we met (laughs) before today (laughs) we haven't yeah we haven't and that makes it sound real creepy you're in my house now so there's no turning back no but certainly not i had i had you had gone on my radar bloop bloop that's not the right word bleep blip 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 that's it (laughs) blue bloop kind of makes me feel fat you 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 blipped on that me. was a big bloop. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, periscope down. You you blipped on my radar when I was trying. I was talking with Zach Lyman. Yes, a treasure of a human being. One of my best friends, and I can't stand him. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, loathe him. But he was so kind to me when I it was right before. No, I was in Greece actually, what? and I was on the Facebook group of Arizona comedians because I had just gotten moved to Arizona and I was like wow what a fascinating group of human beings and Zach had said something like oh I have a podcast I'm a comedian for this long if anyone wants advice or anything reach out and so I messaged him and then he messaged me back and then I started listening to his podcast and I heard an episode with Lou Moon oh yeah and I was like oh this guy's really funny so as I started to get my list of people that I wanted on this podcast, the the moon was always there, but I just could, you were out of grasp. So yeah, and by out of grasp, I mean I guess I just didn't take the time to <laughs> reach you. But you know what, manifestation works. And yeah. I said I want Lou on my podcast, and we ended up talking with each other, and now you're here. Yeah, it 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 does feel really good because you have been on my radar. Did I bloop on you too? You blooped on Did me too. Did we bloop each other? Yeah, oh, we blooped all over each other. <laughs> <laughs> 
For those of you who can't see, out of frame, I my feet are, are just kicking ever so, just like a kid <laughs> sitting above a pool, uh, just flutter kicking. And that that was pure joy. That was. <laughs> I have not flutter kicked for anyone. Yeah. On this show yet, so this is really great. Yeah. <laughs> no, like I mean, so you you blooped onto onto my radar, so hard, and then like a hard bloop. Yeah, and. I don't know. You you get so much advice doing comedy that like I think for a while it's just all advice and you don't have the filter for like what's good advice, what's bad advice. Uh, and okay, so okay. um and so I think I had heard like it was it had to have been like that year or something, which okay. had to have been probably 2019. Okay. Uh, and like I got into it got into my head. I'm just like, don't ask people for things anymore. Don't bother them. If they want you, they'll ask you. And like and that was totally counter to like what I had built like my whole comedy career on, which was just like asking people like, Hey, can I do your show? Nice. And then if they said yes, I'd be like, Great. And if they said no, I'd also say great. And if they were no and they were angry, I just blocked them. <laughs> you know, just like get the fuck out of here. Were there a lot of no plus angry? Uh there were a few no plus angries. Wow. That were that were that were like, I've never seen you. Who the fuck are you? Wow. And, and it was like, okay, I don't <laughs> that that's aggressive. That's yeah. too much. And but like that was uh you know, I have really like worked on my like self esteem over the past couple of years. Fair enough. And so, you know, when I was just getting started into doing comedy, those no plus angries, you know, in my head was like, oh, they're right. Who the fuck am I? You know, and oh. just, you know, the the sadness oh, cloud, you know, over my head just got bigger. Oh, it just dissipated you know? over my head. So oh, I, my I feel it's just gone away. The yeah. sunshine is is now uh, shining bright. Yeah. But I'm glad I'm glad that it's also gone away from you but go on yeah. please. like it hasn't completely gone away oh, okay. <laughs> but, you know it's look you're great but <laughs> like it's not you're not fixing my life <laughs> Stefan. <laughs> you're not my dad Stefan. Yeah. Yeah. okay i get it okay all right fair enough as much as i try to be look okay. you're you're helping you're, you're helping i'm not i'm not gonna say that i'm not gonna say that's not real either <laughs> I'm like a tiny umbrella, like yeah. a, a martini umbrella, perhaps. I, I have I have wonderful people in my life who all hold tiny umbrellas over my head. It's just like an umbrella army. Exactly. Oh. Well, welcome to the team. Oh, th yeah. thank you. Yeah. I'm gonna get it branded. It's gonna be like Lou Moon. <laughs> bloop. It's a yeah, it's bloop exactly. It. Bloop spelled B L O U B. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah. Correct. You with the two dots over it. I I'm really like. glad that my name rhymes with so much stuff. <laughs> It's a treasure. Satani doesn't seem to rhyme with much. So yeah, it kind of sounds like Satan. So I get that sometimes. <laughs> That's uh, that had not crossed my mind, but oh, now it's in there. I'm watching you. Now it's <laughs> now it's jumbled in in yeah. with all the other thoughts. Hey, get behind me. A guy named Jesus <laughs> that sounds like Satan. Yeah, it's, it sounds like. Is your name a, Jesus? It's middle name Jesus, last name Satan. I mean, you have the long hair and the beard. This is a this is a Corona thing. I yeah, didn't, yeah. I didn't used to be like this. 2019. Uh, I haven't gotten my hair cut for a year and a half, mm. almost. But I was high and tight. It was just razor fade here, and then I had the really cool kind of slick oh, hair yeah. there. So then, absolutely, I, yeah. And then now I um I was like, well, now that it's like a, a penitentiary. No, nope, that's not the right word. <laughs> now that it is the penitentian partition no nope, i can't think of it where, quarantine where they where they uh you know alcohol was illegal that's oh prohibition prohibition now it's like prohibition to get into the barber shop i decided not to get my hair cut but now it's free so well it's not free cost wise right. but yeah know. took me a while to get there but you know one snip at a time but it looks really good oh thank <laughs> like, you thank did, you did it grow like that naturally or were you like thinning and layering yourself hair and makeup just left as youth came in the door so oh it, gotcha this was ours <laughs> i was take. wondering what that trailer was outdoors <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah they live with us now so okay, i well, make them spritzes and they do my yeah. hair and makeup there we go that's that's an even trade i if i lived here Yes. And this is a pitch. If uh, I enough. lived here <laughs> with with you and your lovely wife, yes, and did menial tasks for you, and you gave me spritzes and also a roof, 
A little blip for bloop. That's how. That's what I call <laughs> but, that. Blip for bloop. <laughs> that is so hard to say. <laughs> it's real tough. Oh yeah. god. <clears throat> if Doctor Seuss wasn't canceled, maybe that could be his Phantom's <laughs> next book. I forgot about that. That's, <laughs> that. <laughs> One bloop, two bloop, red bloop, blue bloop. God, that is <laughs> Bl- blue bloop is horrible. <laughs> blue bloop. <laughs> The worst of all yeah. bloops. Yeah, we're just gonna say we're gonna say Robin's egg. Yeah. Yes. Robin's egg bloop. <laughs> I like that Robin's egg bloop. And speaking of Robin's egg yeah. and Robins, you and Zach Lyman have a podcast out. Yes, the best animal review podcast. Yes, we do. <laughs> Please tell my audience about this wonderful new show. So, uh, myself and uh, my my very good friend Zach Lyman, uh, we have a podcast. Where we have decided to review every single animal on a five star scale <laughs> based on what criteria you may ask, there isn't really like a written one it's <laughs> it's very much like based on how I feel that day that's <laughs> yeah, that's how most Yelp reviews are written one hundred percent, so I think that's. Right on par with everything. Exactly. I I think Zach was having a bad day when we recorded our episode about anteaters. I heard a clip of that. Because he was, at some point, he was just like, just fuck these things. And was like so mad (laughs) (laughs) at the very idea of an anteater. Oh, anteaters. My wife, she went to, she's from Brazil. She went to visit some relatives on the farm yes. in central, north central Brazil. And there were anteaters there. And oh, they yes. had to rip one off of a dog because they call it the hug of death. Their claws are just so long and sharp. You guys probably have covered this on the yes. pod. But it'll just hug you and never let go. Yeah, it'll like slice open your belly straight up. <gasps> and this is. <sighs> Uh, this was in, in Brazil, you said? Brazil, yeah. Was it the lesser anteater, also known as the tamandua? That's what it was. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. You guys do your homework. That's, That's amazing. Zach will make fun of me for mentioning this on the podcast, but animals at one point was going to be like a career path for me. Oh, okay. Before like, I dropped out of college to like be an artist or whatever. <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> sounds like you're saying it how your parents say it is that uh yeah no i'm projecting for sure okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> but like uh like before i had really decided to like pursue anything artistic i was going to school for zoology wow and like with a with a specialization in taxonomy which is classification oh not taxidermy i no, thought that was taxonomy you're gonna stuff yeah. them okay Ta- taxonomy Oh, oh yeah, okay. That's, yeah. okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Also, could you say the, the zoo word again? Zoologist? Zoologist? Yes. I thought it was zoologist. No, that, that would require another O, my friend. Oh. How many O's are there in zoologist? Oh, so there would be three if it was zoologist? <laughs> well, so. Zoologist? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, I kind of, that makes sense to yeah. me. It may, it's absurd to have three O's, but it does make sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm following. The word zoologist totally makes sense, but that's not what we say. <laughs> no, no, no. The way that you explained it now to me, zoologist is going to be ingrained in my brain. Yeah. So next time I use it at a party, I'm going to be like, <clears throat> I knew a uh, wannabe zoologist. And they're going to be like, <laughs> Isn't it zoologist? And I'm like, if there were no! three O's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> dork. So you were going to be a zoologist I was. specializing in ta- uh, ta- taxonomy. Taxonomy. Classification. Amazing. Yeah. And I, I thank you. I appreciate it. I just agreed with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of course. I am amazing. It was badass. You know what? When you think about it, I am a hero. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was... Cause so... I have retained a lot of that information. Okay. And it's still stuff I just really enjoy reading about. Like, okay. yeah. Okay. And so... That's fair. I remember when I was younger, dinosaurs. I loved finding and naming... Or finding the names of the dinosaurs. Yeah, was really I cool. I was also a big dinosaur kid myself. Oh, no that way. Was, yeah. Like, Get I didn't... out of town. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I live here. Yeah, I, I live here now. Make me another spritz. <laughs> spritz me, Captain. <laughs> Before I unmow your lawn. <laughs> Just dump grass on Put the grass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's happened before. Oh, All right. I, I know you're not bluffing. Did I open a wound? <laughs> like, yes. um, no, that was like, 
this is a fun thing about me. Uh, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't talk until I was about like four or five. Okay. And so um, when I was really, I, I learned, I, I knew how to like read some words before I, I knew how to talk. Dang. Was your yeah. first word baboon or some sort of <laughs> very specific like, animal? Technically, one of my first words is paleontologist. <laughs> No way. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I still can't say. It. I can't say zoologist. So <laughs> props to you. Yeah, well, man. it's also like I I traded that ability for like like the reason that happened is because I'm like autistic, you know. <laughs> and so like spoken language sort of took me a while, you know. <laughs> like, okay, so but still amazing. Yeah. And uh there you go, agreeing with me again. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, th this incredible. time it is. This time it is. <laughs> this time I know who I am and what I am. Just slowly, ever so slowly. Yeah. Those clouds just starting to exactly. fade away. Exactly. All right, well, so then in college, you dropped out to do arts and stuff. Yes. And then is that when comedy came into play? Uh, comedy, comedy took a little bit of time. What it, was the artsy thing? How did you get out of taxonomy? So... I I decided I decided I wanted to be like I try to make it as a musician. That was the thing. Oh, that's where the base. By the way, I know, calling back to when you were like or whatever you want to call it. I love how <laughs> your profession was going to be exactly what you're going to call something and then you went into something you yeah. didn't even know what to call. So I love the that was I don't know beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. I'm, I, amazing. Again. Yeah, well and and that was like the sort of that that was my thought process. I was like Right now, for me, life is so defined. Okay. And I haven't really had a lot of time to go into things where something unexpected could happen. Mm. And okay. so, like, that's when, like, I told my parents, I was like, I I want out of this community college that I'm going to. And they were like, that's fine. We paid, you know, $70 for it. We'll, <laughs> you'll be okay. <laughs> like, and then uh, I just, like, started. Was it here in Phoenix? Yeah, it was uh, Chandler Gilbert Community College. Oh, Chan Gill. Uh, nice. Chan, Chan Gill. CGCC. C -c 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 <laughs> so many. Oh, my God. That's like more letters than zoologist. Yeah. That's incredible. Okay. And it's so, so much worse to say. <laughs> <laughs> just it, it doesn't even roll off it, the tongue It right. feels horrible. It's just all guttural. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I've been chewing on like a two by four. Oh, after God. that yeah exactly Ugh. um well okay so yeah. you got out great congratulations yeah. uh, thank you that's it, it took a lot of effort to just like get up from somewhere just like i'm bored of this and like leave <laughs> so so you went on to follow your heart and your base and you yeah you had a bit what was the band name called uh i was you know what the funny thing is i never really played i played bass in a band in high school um okay. But then I started meeting a lot of people, you know, like who are like who were like me and like minded, and I was like, these are gonna be like the people who are my friends for a long time. Okay. And then I found out that if I meet too many people who are like me, they also play bass. <laughs> so oh, rough. when yeah, and so it was the opposite problem that a lot of people have when they get into music. Which was, you know, because the usual problem is, is like, I want to play guitar. Right. And you, you need to give me the coordinates of your little bass cove because <laughs> I could not find a basis for the life of me. That's, yeah, it's, it's so weird. They're, they're all in Gilbert. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, but it was so weird where it was, it's usually like, I want to play guitar. And then they're like, we already got two guitarists. So like, you should learn how to play bass. They were like, well, like, I'm the bass player, but we need another guitar player. So I started learning how to play guitar. And so I, I played oh. gu I played guitar in a lot of bands and not that well. Oh, okay. Like, like well enough because I was in like a lot of punk bands and stuff. Right. Like I was really, there's a lot of music that I'm like really into. The music I'm really into is like a lot of like older sort of classic rock and I love jazz. Okay. Okay. And then all of my, all my friends who are like minded were like, you should get into punk. Hmm. And so I got really into punk because I just started playing in all these punk bands and they gave <clears> me all their like favorite band recommendations. And okay. that's why I got like super into punk music and like the punk sort of idea of like what life should be. Oh. And like that's that's sort of like what's gotten me to here now, which is that like I still kind of have that mindset. Oh, very, very interesting. Yeah. 
I when I, w- I was in a band in high school, we were pop punk. There we go. So it was very Blink-182, Sum 41. We, w- we ended up going to some showcases here in Phoenix because we were in Cottonwood. People thought we were a Christian band. Which oh, no. We were not. But You lived in Cottonwood? I lived in Cottonwood. That's that's interesting. I didn't, I didn't know people were from there. <laughs> yeah. There are a rare few <laughs> yeah. that live there. I lived on a farm. Okay. Strangely enough. That makes sense, though. Like yeah. in Cottonwood. Yeah, that makes I'm, sense. I'm not like shitting on it. That just like makes sense. Oh, no, it, it, it totally does. <laughs> yeah. You can't see my belt buckle with my family name on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I have that hanging on the mantle, but. Is it really? No. So okay. I, I don't have a mantle. I'm not fancy enough. Yeah. For a it is hanging up. You figure it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we. <clears throat> I have to say my wife has given me a lot of influence on Brazilian music, which is phenomenal. Multiple yeah. genres. Um, the That's like uh, like Bossa Nova. Right? Bossa Nova yeah. is amazing. There's this other genre called Sertanejo, which is like country, except you don't want to throw up after listening to it. Yeah. It's so good. And then there's funk. It's called funky. Okay. And... Oh boy, what a trip. It's, yeah? Yeah. Brazilian it's, funk. Yeah. It's not like our type of funk, though. It is not like... It's so trashy. It's That's, so but, like, funk. I love that. I love, like... I love the idea of trashy funk, and I love trashy stuff in general. Oh, yes. Oh, it's the best. Yes. That's what I call myself, actually. Trashy Steph, when I listen to funk. Yeah, like, for like, sure. Trashy Steph is coming yeah, out! I transform yeah. into, into yeah. Trashy Steph on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> Drinking my spritz. Drinking <laughs> I'm drinking my spritz out of my hydro flask. <laughs> I'm trashy Steph. <laughs> oh, man. Well, speaking of trashy, we're going to get into the advice portion of this podcast. Okay. Where we're going to answer some questions from Reddit's advice column. Oh, no. But before we get into that, we're going to inspire ourselves with some inspirational quotes. So, Lou. Okay. I usually like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that help get them through their rain cloud days do you have any inspirational quotes that you cling to to help motivate you get you happy bring that moon full like i i know i have like stuff okay i i know i have favorite quotes but i can't i can't think of anything right it's probably from kurt vonnegut (laughs) (laughs) this almost sounds like a movie but it's like the wrong part in the movie. Yeah. Because the podcast, we're almost at the end. But you know what? That's okay. Because we can put it in, we can edit it out. So in post, you're going to have be like, oh, I remember this quote. Yes. So I don't have to shame you for being an awful person for not remembering <laughs> quotes. Fair enough. So, totally fine. I, so you know what? I have a quote here just in case. Just, you know, because sometimes guests don't have their quotes. This one is not by any person whatsoever. It's by a robot. It's called Inspire Robot. And what it does is it uses AI to just plunge into the depths of scholarly works, maybe the Bible, Torah, um, Shakespeare, comic books, Marvel, not DC. We don't go there. No. But anywhere, really, for the wisest words known to man or woman, and it puts them together. Okay. For an inspirational quote. Good. So I'll read this one. You can tell me what it means to you, Lou. It says, feeling down, you've only got yourself to blame. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> that's the last thing i want to hear when i'm feeling down <laughs> I, I, when i'm feeling down i i want i want the ins, the inspire robot to be like it's this person's fault and i'm like <laughs> i agree <laughs> like <laughs> She doesn't blame anyone else but you yeah but you only got yourself to, that's horrible you know what flipping it Flipping it, you might it, it might be like you know what you've only got yourself to blame, and you are to blame for the good things. So you are in control of your destiny. Yeah. So bloop on over and and make good things happen <laughs> yeah. and conquer that day. Carpe that deal. Deal. <laughs> deal. Be the biggest, nastiest, trashiest bloop on the radar. Be the grossest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Be that spritz filled bloop. <laughs> the wettest bloop. <laughs> the moistest bloop. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, I feel inspired. Do you feel inspired, Lou? Are you ready? I do. All right. We're going to go into these questions from Reddit. This first one found by our fan Dylan. Thank you, Dylan, for finding this question. It says, Grandma. Keep sending me worship music videos. 
How do I respond? I'm not really a religious person. I consider myself more of an apatheist than anything. Hmm. But my grandma keeps sending me worship music. I have no idea how to answer. She's literally sent me just two texts, and each is a link to a worship song. I honestly don't know. I'd know how to respond, even if she just sent me a link to any song. But because it's worship music, I feel like there's something expected of me now. What should I do? Uh, that... That's a ve- that's a juicy question. <laughs> oh man, so full of juice. And I feel like this that hasn't happened to me personally. Yeah, my but I won't be dead. surprised when it does. Oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I would be surprised when it does because my grandma is long dead. So oh my she gosh. sent me some worship songs. I'd be like, God is real. <laughs> that, yeah, if if she did that with specifically worship songs. Yes, exactly. Yeah, if she did that with like a Steely Dan song, it would be like, Get out of here, grandma. <laughs> yeah, grandma, get back in the grave. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Which is. Uh, unexpected to me because Steely Dan is literally my favorite band. Like, oh, I've seen your Facebook post. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah no, I get you. <laughs> yeah. I was rolling along with you. Yeah, but... it's part of my brand. Uh, <laughs> no, but like that, I think that is what I would do. I, it's like I would treat that like we're exchanging music. Mm. And then just like send her like whatever back. Just send her like, you know, the hottest Childish Thanks. Gambino track. I don't listen to modern music much. Oh, you know? okay. Well, Childish Gambino, that was <laughs> great. I was going to say Arcade Fire, but that's yeah. even better. Yeah. Um, no, that's like, send her, send her something that is like clearly like not like a part of like her radar. Oh. You know? I get you. Big nasty a, bloop on her radar. A little bloop. Oh, God. Yeah. I love the amount of bloops we've been doing here. Oh, that's. If we say bad words, I can just bloop over it. That's. <laughs> do, do you want a clean bloop? I mean, yeah, for, could you, could you yeah. do a bloop? Yeah, okay, just add a point here. All right. <laughs> bloop. <laughs> oh! The cleanest, clearest bloop yeah. of all. This podcast brought to you by Bloop. If Bloop was a product or brand for something, what would it be? Jam? Bloopberry jam? <laughs> bloop be- <laughs> I I I would want Bloop to be in direct competition with uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I like that. I it, like that. It's products designed to make your life worse. <laughs> <laughs> I love. Oh, wait, is that her whole lifestyle brand? I thought Bloop glo- Gloop Goop Goop was just the vagina scented candle. No, is it, it is several things. Come to find out, oh. um, I I think I watched a couple of episodes. I, she has like a docu series. On Netflix. Why not? Uh, yeah. yeah, right. It's like when you're famous, they'll just let you do whatever you want. Oh, <laughs> like it's <God>. like <laughs> I'm uh, jealous. That's what it is. Yeah. I'm just jealous that I didn't think of it first. I just want to make a, like a bunch of stuff that doesn't work and then like people buy it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then, just for because yeah, of me. And exactly. Like, it was great. It doesn't work, but five stars. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If something makes you feel like it's working, that's good enough, you know? So if we become famous, when we become famous, Lou, yeah. we need to partner on a bloop product bloop brand really right. for men where that's that's what it is it's goop for men feeling blue go bloop yeah and you won't feel blue anymore yeah. and this will make your penis 13 inches longer if you at least at least minimum have just the most massive gigantic you, dick you'll have to just roll it up like a fruit roll up at some <laughs> point because it's no you'll wrap it around your neck like a scarf <laughs> just, it's like oh, oh it's cold out isn't it? you look like you're gonna give a keynote speech for <laughs> pornography i guess exactly <laughs> releasing the iPhone 5. <laughs> yeah. Gee. Yeah. Oh, God. If you put, like, something that's, like, whatever those uh, sticky hands are that, you, like, you win at Peter Piper Pizza. Oh, and yes. And you put that on the end of your dick, swing it out. You swing from skyscrapers like Spider-Man. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine the position that you'll have. Because you know how Spider-Man, he has his legs spread out and he just goes like this i think you'll just have to go like this yeah exactly almost like you're riding a whale and just (laughs) just like throw it out oh my god (laughs) 
<laughs> um, me and the, I mean, the Green Goblin in this case might be an STD that you'll have to get right. cleared up. But it's, it's only... Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> it's Gwyneth. <laughs> <laughs> the Goop Goblin. The Goop Goblin. <laughs> the Goop Goblin. Uh, the, the Green Goblin. Yeah, the, that's it. It's the Green Goblin. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, that our was... product is guaranteed one hundred percent that you can do this. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you live in New York City or some adjacent city exactly. with equally high skyscrapers. Yeah, because or if you're in like you know one of the flyover states, you know, that's it... like you, what are you gonna do? Stick to a cow? Yeah. <laughs> It's a new form of cow tipping. Yeah, just just sit back. Whoosh. Hey, Earl, catch this. Yeah. You used to go fishing. You know what? We we are going to... Yeah, this is for everyone. Oh, this is great. Yeah. yeah. Bloop is now inclusive. For Yes. A minute ago, it was exclusive. No yokels. No That's... flyover states, people. But now we're expanding. Exactly. There, they'll be cheaper, too. Like a urban... No, a rural bloop. Yeah. Country bloop. <laughs> Country time bloop. <laughs> Country time. <laughs> Gospel bloops. Yeah. That's, that's... <laughs> so send all of that to your grandma. And see <laughs> yeah. Send her this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we've got a new segment, actually. It's called Positive Spin. So I've created this segment because a lot of the times we think when bad things happen, we go to the negative. True. And so what I like to do is put a negative scenario in here for you, Lou, okay. to think of some positives for so you can train your mind to be a more positive thinker. I'm, yeah. I need that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> this specific scenario, you come back, you die. That's not the... <laughs> <laughs> and you come back reincarnate Lou. Yeah. You come back, but you come back as what was the lowest rated animal of the animal the podcast so far? Uh the horses. <laughs> you come back as a horse. Oh, the mare. That's my I mean, no pun intended. That's my nightmare. <laughs> it's, I am I hate horses. I'm terrified of them. Like I'm I'm scared of them. Oh, they're dicks. I I get it. But thank you. I get it. Like, yeah, dude. What what kind of thing do you have to go up to? And he's like, mm, mm, yeah. so scared all the time. Where you're just like, chill. <laughs> I'm not gonna hurt you. And you just have to pet its face. No. Dude, no. If no. if I was so much of an asshole in society, that the only way to calm me down was for you to pet my face. Would right. you would you want me around eating oats out of a bag strapped to my face? I don't know. Absolutely think so. not. Yeah. And then I mean, think about the the type of space you get for to run around, to gallop, to trot. Yeah. No, you know that's not fair. Yeah, like because th that's naked. That, that's great. I, that's no, like I I could definitely see a lot of benefits to being a horse. I I could walk without a cane. Uh, <laughs> yeah, fair I enough. could gallop without a cane. I had a hard time galloping as it was before. <laughs> But like I <laughs> Amazing. You're yeah. just you're just trotting into positives here. Exactly. This is so many any more? You, you um, did great. Scored like five thousand points. Oh, uh, there we go. The, I mean then I'll I'll, I'll keep it there. Okay. Keep, right. keep it at five thousand. Let's yeah. let's um stop while we're we're ahead. Okay, good. I don't want to say too many nice things about horses. Yeah, let's I mean they're they're listening mm. with their big ears. <laughs> All right, so with their airpods. <laughs> Oh my god, there's one right there out the window. <laughs> <laughs> How to get him on the roof? Yeah, it's the second floor. What the fuck? Okay. All right. Just pet his face and it'll go away. <laughs> Last question from the Reddit advice column. It says, okay. want to quit a job after one day, but my parents won't let me. I started a job working in a daycare and I've worked only one day, but I am seeing many red flags about this place. They did not tell me how much I'm getting paid. And when I asked, they told me, don't worry about it. They also threw me in with 30 four to six year olds without any training. I just find it to be very unorganized and I can see myself being un unhappy. I was just looking for a job for the summer before college starts again and I have other options for me, but my mom says I have to stay a month. I'm thinking about quitting behind her back and just telling her they fired me. Is that a good idea? Do you guys think I should quit? Um, dude, I have so much to say about this. Oh, please. Oh, my gosh. Please. Dig in, Lou. Okay. Scavenge. First of all, so this is the question asker, as implied. 
Yes. That by saying, <laughs> by saying in the question that this is like the job that you get before college, they are implying that they are 18 or older and they are an adult. Correct. Fuck your parents. Oh, <laughs> you hear that? You heard it here. And fuck your grandma, too. Oh, well, I yeah. got a gospel tune for you. Yeah. Fuck all y'all. I got the new song from DC <laughs> Talk. Like, who gives a shit about Toby Mac? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, man, you came in hot. And That's I love right. it. I came yeah. trotting after you. And just like horses do, we stick together. Exactly. Like the glue made in the factory from horses. I... Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, Just like fuck your family. Okay, I mean, let's, <laughs> like, let's be clear don't, about. Yeah, look, I'm sure your parents are just looking out for like your best fucking intentions Interest. or whatever, but they're not there. You're there. They don't know, and also they said, "Don't worry about it." When you ask them how much they paid, they're not paying you. Did you sign anything? Did you sign something? Did you ask before you... Did, yeah, did yeah. you... What happened? You just showed up and they're like, don't worry. Did, is this a mafia daycare? They're like, like, what? Yeah. <laughs> don't worry about it. Just watch hey, the you're asking a lot of questions. <laughs> like, <laughs> the most unfortunate if... Yeah. Uh, like... Oh, God. Where'd you find this job? It fell off a truck. <laughs> like, Stupid. But you know what? I think you bring up a good point about yeah. the parents not being there. Bring your parent. Be like, Mom, oh. you work there one day. Yeah. And tell me if you can make it. Uh, they have. They clearly have a very loose hiring policy. She can get a job there like that. Exactly. Like, yeah. Sub her in for you. Be like, oh, uh, uh, sorry, Tony, I can't work today. Mom is going to sub yeah. in. I'm like, okay, <laughs> no, I won't even worry about it. And then Mama, Mama Jordan is going to be in yeah. there and she'll see. <laughs> yeah. She'll see how, like, they didn't train you. You have no experience with kids. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, this is a lose, lose. It's like a 10 times lose situation for you. And, like, your parents are just like, no, just stay there. It'll be good for you. They don't know. They don't know shit. They don't know. They don't know shit. <laughs> they got jobs right out of college. I'm looking directly at your parents now. They got jobs directly out of college because the market was good back then. Oh, they had it <laughs> so good exactly. back in the 80s, all but, right, with yeah. all that blow and music. <laughs> exactly. They Wham. were super concentrated because of they were on blow. <laughs> exactly. I mean, yeah. what the hell? All we have, it, we've got meth? I mean, that doesn't, that works havoc yeah. on the brain. Like, your dad's plan to drop his psychology major, to go to a business major, that was smart back then. Yes, good job, dad. Yeah. Nowadays, you can do whatever you want because no one's going to hire you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You'd be like, I'm going to be a zoologist. And yeah. Like, we don't give a fuck. We're exactly. not going to hire you. Yeah, exactly. You need experience. I mean, so obviously. my main advice to you is to not work in general, live in a van, and be happy. Oh. That's, that's, that's my advice. That's my plan anyway. Oh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Mm. Perfect ending to the podcast. Lou. Thank you so much for joining. Genuinely, thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. <laughs> oh, this was a splash of a good time. A spritz a of a good spritz. time. Uh, mm, amazing. That's, I'm going to get used to these. <laughs> yes, you will. In the guest room, as you mow my lawn, I will make you unlimited spritz. But what, before you do that, I yeah. wanted to ask, where can people follow you? What have you got going on? Yeah. What have you got to plug? Uh, you can follow me on everything uh, at Lou Moon Comedy. Uh, I don't have uh, a Facebook fan page because that's not going to do anything for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> look, I got into this too late. It, there, <laughs> I, I don't know what to do with them. I yeah. have one, and I'm like, "What does this do?" Yeah, it's you made the right call. Yeah, <laughs> you made the right call. You can follow me on Instagram like an adult uh, <laughs> at Lumen Comedy, uh, <laughs> and then uh, every Thursday you can listen to uh, the Best Animal Review podcast. Where uh, my friend Zach Lyman and I make uh, goofy little fun jokes about animals and stuff. <laughs> what a good description for that. Goofy little fun jokes yeah. about animals and, and stuff. stuff. <laughs> yeah. With a taxonomy expert, ladies and gentlemen. And you know what? If you guys are like, 
I can't search. I can't remember all this stuff. It's in the show notes, dick. It's been like 250 episodes. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, get fired up, Steph. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Go into those show notes and yeah. show Lou some love. Please. <sighs> I'm I'm touch starved. Please Star. love me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Spritzes, they get me a little angry sometimes. Yeah. That's what happens. Oh, man. Good. All right. No. Well. Feel, feel your feelings, Stefan. That Italian rage just starts to boil over. Yeah. And, um... <laughs> I just start saying red. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I start seeing <laughs> my, eye, my eyes become pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> I just turn into a little marinara pizza. Yeah. All red. Oh, God. Oh, man. Don't make me go four cheese up in this bitch. <laughs> and with that, that is our final topic. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Lou. Thank you, Stefan. And we'll talk at you next week. I love you guys. I love you, wow. too. <laughs> I love you as well. And that is the end, everybody. The crescent of this episode the croissant of this episode maybe because it was just flaky delicious and if you put a little butter on it mm, so good tray magnifique guys you guys are also tray magnifique and i love you and i also like you and i think that's important too you can't just love your audience you have to like them too and i do both you guys are splendid and magnificent and are just razzle me and dazzle me all day long. So I hope I razzle and dazzle you. I hope I leave you with a little dazzle. I drizzle you with dazzle, maybe. But, <laughs> well, I'll leave it at that. And I love you guys so much. Thank you. If you haven't subscribed, review, and follow me on Instagram. And follow Lou. Show him some support. He is, again, a gem. Trash compared to you, but an absolute gem. Love him. Love you guys. Mwah.